welcome to securing funding for summer research brought to you by the McMaster Society for Engineering Research. We're also known as Maxer. Um, I'm going to be one of your co-hosts today. My name is Yasmin, and I'm one of the VP, I'm, I'm the VP Design for Maxer. Hey, I'm Dylan, and I'm the EngFizz Rep. So you might be wondering a little bit about our society and what we do. Um, again, our name uh, is Maxer. We were formerly known as the USRE, and we were established back in 2016. We're a society that aims to connect undergraduate students in the Faculty of Engineering with other undergraduate students like yourselves, as well as graduate researchers, and of course, most importantly, professors. Um, what do we do as a society? We try to promote research within the Faculty of Engineering, as well as raise awareness and increase awareness about the research opportunities that are available to you to take uh, take on. And in the process of doing that, we build a strong community among the researchers, um, like I said, with the undergrads and grad, grad researchers as well. Three main focus areas that we like to focus on as a society are networking, professional development, as well as student mixers. Now for networking, um, you may have seen some of our events, such as the Research and Entrepreneurship Fair, and these type of networking events allow you to um, network with other undergraduate students, uh, professors who are looking to hire, supervisors. Um, again, a lot of people and increases awareness about um, research opportunities. Now, secondly, our second focus is professional development. We do offer a lot of workshops and a lot of presentations that help you develop as a researcher, such as the poster showcase. Um, we teach you how to do a three minute thesis and we run a few, uh, small event in the summer as well. Um, Lastly, we like to also focus on providing you guys with opportunities to just relax and take a break from work and research and mingle with other students as well as professors. Now for the most important thing that almost everyone came here for today is the NSERC Research Award. So the NSERC Research Award is known as the USRE and it's awarded to students who are looking to do research approximately 16 weeks during the summer at an eligible university, including McMaster University. Now, the research award is quite competitive. So um, based on the official website, you, ought, you need a B minus, so a GPA of B minus to at least be considered. Usually to be, to be competitive, you need an A minus, and that would be uh, equivalent to a 10.0 on the 12.0 GPA scale for McMaster. Again, it does vary from year to year, depending on the pool application. So for example, I applied last year. I didn't have a 10. I had somewhere between 9.5 and 9.8. I still got it. So don't like take it with a grain of salt. Sometimes the cutoff is different year to year. Again, depending on how many people apply and what the GPA is for those people that apply. The set due date as of right now is February 5th, 2021 for all of the faculty of engineering. It does seem a little weird saying 2021 right now. <laughs> all right. so. Steps on how you can apply. The screenshot on the left side of the screen that you guys should be able to see is from the NSERC website and it just shows you a breakdown and a summary of the USRE application. Now the value, the applicant, so the research award is valued at $6,000. Um, so the professor will be paying you minimum wage, whatever the minimum wage is right now. And the deadline again is February 5th. 2021. So stay tuned uh, for any emails that may come from your department administrators telling you the application has opened. I personally know the ECE department. So Kelly has sent out the emails, um, all the ECE students telling them the uh, outlining the process and telling them to start applying. Now for the application process, it is a two step process. So there is a part one and a part two for the application. Part one is to be done by you, i.e. the student. And once you finish part one, part two is to be done by the supervisor that you're looking to do um, research with. Now, please keep in mind that before you start applying and uh, filling out the application, you will need to have a verbal agreement from your professor or the supervisor that you're going to apply with saying, yes, I will, I, I will be hiring you. Like, I want to hire you. And then you start applying. Um, and then when you apply, you will need a transcript along to submit along with your online uh, application. Now, we do recommend that you get one to two transcripts when you're uh, ordering it off of Mosaic. So how to order it, if you go on to Mosaic and you go to Student Center, 
Um, on the side of your screen, you can see if you click on the academic drop down menu, there is an option to requesting an official transcript um, for you. And then once you do that and you click the little arrow to take you to the next page, you can see, so the picture that after that, the page that you'll see will be on the right. And that is, so you select your institution. I believe it will be filled out for you by default because you are accessing your transcript through McMaster University. For quantity, you can put one or two. We recommend that you put two. Um, and you check box the one that says sealed envelope. Now, um, please keep in mind that we, the campus is not offering pickup for the transcripts because of COVID, so they will be emailed to your home address only. And that is the only way they can get it. Um, just a quick FYI, usually in previous years when we were in person, um, you would have to get two sealed envelopes, one for you to use and open up after to scan and submit along with your online su uh, submission. The second sealed envelope remains sealed and will get and usually is given to the department administrator for the department in which your supervisor works in, not the one that you're affiliated with. So if you're with the EC, if you're an ECE student, but you're looking to work with a supervisor that is affiliated with the uh, Department of Chemical Engineering, let's say, for example, you have to be giving, you have to give it to the Department of Chemical Engineering and not the ECE department. So hopefully I'm unmuted. Yeah. Um, so uh, what if you don't have maybe the GPA required for this or uh, you're just interested in other sources uh, for funding? Well, there's three that we're going to be covering in this uh, presentation. Uh, above uh, NSERP. Um, so first of all, there's the work program. So that one is actually very easy to get if you have OSAP. If you do not have OSAP uh, or you're ineligible, uh, you'll be ineligible for uh, this as well. Um, so this funding source is actually smaller in amount um, and there's no set deadline for the application, but there are some dates to keep in mind, which I'll get to in a following slide. Then there's my tax global link. Um, that one's a really cool award that lets you research abroad. So that means in another country and another university in that other country. And the application is rather long, um, but uh, it can also be kind of hard to find a host institution, the host being the other university. And uh, th the large funding source, uh, which it comes with, um, actually is used usually to cover travel and accommodation. Um, and thirdly, there's the Research Experience Award. This one is only for first years. You would have had to apply from high school. We're not gonna go in depth uh, for it because pretty much anyone that's here either knows about it and has it or can't have access to it. So all we're gonna say is basically, if you do have it, you know, and uh, you'll need to, we'll remind you that you'll need to keep a 9.5 average by the end of this year. And uh, this one's another one of those large funding sources. So let's dive into MyTax Global Link first. Um, this one is a $6,000 award um, and uh, it's given to the supervisor, uh, him or herself, uh, rather than a student. And this is actually used as a reimbursement uh, most of the time um, for travel you know, or accommodation, but sometimes depending on the supervisor's discretion, it might be used as part of the pay instead for the student. Um, the award must be used for research abroad for about 12 to 24 weeks. So this covers basically almost the entire summer up to six months. Um, obviously most people uh, that are not in graduate school uh, so undergrads um, would use this just for the summer. Uh, the deadline for this is usually at the end of January, so there's not a lot of time left. Um, but to be honest, because this year is a COVID year, um, there you're probably going to have a better time if you apply in one of your senior years, if you're uh, in your junior years right now, um, and actually get the experience to travel abroad. Um, there are a bunch of countries you can go to uh, with this award, and these are most of them. 
Um, I personally went to the United Kingdom uh, in the University of Manchester with this award. And what the award was able to do is basically alleviate uh, the travel and accommodation expenses. So that was great. Um, and then there's the McMaster work program. Uh, this one you need OSAP for. If you do not have OSAP, then you're not uh, qualified for this. Uh, but uh, it essentially guarantees if you do have OSAP, this funding, if you do get a job through Mosaic as a work program job. Um, historically, uh, this program subsidizes uh, $2,200 uh, with supervisor contribution to top up this value up to uh, minimum wage or maybe more if you're lucky. Um, and uh, the summer work program jobs are usually posted in March, but uh, make sure to uh, communicate with your prospective supervisor or at least uh, make sure you're all on the same page because the actual job postings are limited to being created before uh, someday in February. We do not have that information yet, but keep uh, checking the McMaster websites for this um, because they do close usually uh, sometime in February. So if they make this posting after that date, or they, they just won't be able to make the posting and you won't be able to apply. So make sure that you keep your eyes on that if you're interested in this. And uh, the application process is a little bit lengthy, so we won't get into it. Uh, but if you're interested, once you get these slides afterwards, uh, you can actually um, check out the link below or uh, look at some of these images and hopefully you can kind of connect the pieces. So all this is kind of useless if you do not have a uh, professor to work with uh, or under. Um, so find approaching a professor is kind of ideal. And if you haven't done this yet uh, and you're interested in research for this summer, um, well, you got to do it ASAP. You got to do it quick because first of all, it's really competitive out there. And also you have to basically apply for all these uh, funding options uh, before uh, their deadlines, right? So um, we'll just recap basically how to approach a professor. First of all, finding a professor can be a difficult task if you do not know one already that you're interested in. Um, and uh, finding the research online can be a little bit hard, but uh, luckily the McMaster Engineering website is very useful and you can find basically all the professors uh, on there and you can even filter them uh, through uh, with the, in terms of department and research clusters. Um, the, you can actually, you should uh, read about their uh, research, um, mostly try to read their published papers if you can by just searching them up on Google and see what you get or Google Scholar even better. Um, and by learning about their research, you can really show that you put effort into uh, learning and it, this really demonstrates interest in securing, uh, securing a position. Um, so what you want to do next is basically write a, the professor a brief email. Make sure it's brief because you don't want to be wasting their time um, and explain your interest. And uh, if you really want to go straight for the, for, for to the point, uh, you can ask for a position in their lab, or you can just ask for a meeting and then uh, pose the question there. Um, and it might be a little bit intimidating, but uh, you, you don't lose anything by doing this, right? So uh, make sure you, you're confident. Um, also, uh, during the meeting, make sure you bring up any relevant experience that you may have, maybe some courses that you did or labs. Um, as well as have your resume or CV handy, just in case they ask for it. And finally, after the meeting, if the, if, uh, the professor sees you as a uh, worthwhile candidate for being an employee, uh, you might want to discuss these funding options before it's too late um, and uh, talk about basically how you might get paid uh, because that's a very large factor. I'm pretty sure most profs would be willing to take a bunch of people if money wasn't a factor. So we want to end uh, by basically, thank you for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, first of all, you can ask in uh, just one minute, uh, you'll be able to ask us using voice or uh, on the chat. I've seen some of you ask uh, over chat, 
or uh, you can contact us uh, through social media, through Google+, MySpace, no, just kidding, uh, Facebook, email, LinkedIn, and Instagram shown here. So thanks for listening, and hopefully uh, you learned something. Uh, so depending on, actually distance isn't even a factor anymore, right? So uh, that's actually a good thing. Um, but uh, actually, who knows for the summer, to be honest. But uh, if if you contact the prof and tell them that you're from another university, that might go two ways. It might be super, you know, sketchy there. They might not know. But uh, it might actually be a really good thing. You're actually very interested, uh, it sounds like. And uh, that might actually go a long way because um, contacting someone from another university is a big, big deal. So. Um, I think that you should probably first contact the prof if you haven't, and then uh, you could, I'm pretty sure you can very easily contact uh, if, if you're applying for NSERC, for example, uh, because there's some of these that you won't actually, all of these except NSERC, you won't be able to apply for, uh, but using NSERC, you can probably do the same uh, process as we do uh, at McMaster. Um, the only thing you need to do, I think, is to I don't know how like the transcripts from another university might work, but I am pretty sure they accept any type of transcript. You just have to find out who the uh, department administrative assistant for undergrad is for that specific department you're applying. Well, at least for ECE, they described that you would um... Uh, you would form a PDF copy, including part one, part two, and your transcripts, and then you would send it by email to that respective department uh, administrator instead of physically handing it in. Uh, so it's separate. Uh, what you submit, or you would complete the NSERC application, which would be where part one and part two are. Part two is what the professor would complete. Part one is what you are completing. And then you would take those copies you would get a PDF along with the transcripts, which are also submitted for the NSERC application on the on the site. And then you would take those and then send them via email. Yeah, so um, there's two, two ways to, so you have to submit it in two ways, basically. You have to finish the application on the portal and then you print it out and then email it to this administrator as well. Okay, so you guys want to talk about maybe your experiences first in, in the past? Uh, in terms, uh, when I, well, I would do interviews in person, but I think it would be the same thing um, online. I guess you would introduce yourself, maybe um, mention your background, because a lot of props might have projects that, um, that they currently are running, and they might even suggest projects that you might be interested in. Uh, and maybe you can see like what's suitable for you or if it's like suitable for your interests. They might have old projects that are posted on their website. So maybe getting to learn some of the new projects might be beneficial for you just to make sure like the, um, the prop has research that you are interested in. Um, I guess you can talk about um, your experience in clubs. Uh, um, I guess maybe what you aim to do over that uh, summer over the position? I yeah, honestly, it depends on the prof, right? Um, yeah, that, that depends, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, it depends. Uh, like, for for my two different, uh, like, uh, interviews, I've had one of them was, like, the prof just, like, took me out for coffee and we just, like, talked. Um, and the other one, like the prof, like I had him as a prof and, uh, and he's just like, Hey, you want to do research for me this summer? Like, yeah. Uh, but it really depends, right. Um, on the prof and what they'll ask. I think a good thing is to have a resume handy, um, even during the interview and maybe send it to them beforehand. Um, just so they have something to like read while you're. Uh, having the interview, maybe they'll be like, oh, it says here that you did this. Can you explain that? That might come up. Um, and just just make your, just be yourself. <laughs> that 
they usually say that, but it's it, it does go a long way because uh, you don't want to sound like a robot, right? Um, you want to just be yourself and not uh, not spook them, basically. Uh, especially online, it's really hard to grasp what people are uh, or who people are. Um, so, uh, and make sure you talk with a camera. Uh, there, it's, it's fine if it's not here. Most profs, like everyone, like they don't expect, uh, especially if, if you're not in your final year, right? They're not gonna expect you to know that much. Um, there's a bunch of training that you do at the beginning of your research, like summer, just to catch up and get to know sort of what you're doing. But even at the end of the summer, you won't really get to a level of a grad student, right? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about that. If there are any questions, like I've, I've had like, in, like question, like, a, like a actual questions from industry, for example, where they did ask like very specific uh, knowledge uh, things. But uh, I, if, if it is something in specific, I would just study the basics that you learn in courses uh, and know about the research that they do don't don't like study it you know because uh, that that's above and beyond and i don't think any normal prof would uh would uh make you go through that i think just knowing what kind of research the lab does would just be beneficial for yourself in terms of making sure like you find a suitable thing that you're interested in yeah. uh my, it might not be like the prof will quiz you but I guess it'll just be good for you to know. What does go a long way is to like have questions prepared about their research. Like, uh, hey, I saw that you were doing this. Like, what does that mean? Even if it's like, it might be super simple questions for them, but showing like, obviously if it's like, I don't know, nanotechnology, don't ask like, hey, what's nanotechnology? Like ask them like, some specifics, like just to show that you have read some papers or some stuff that they published. Uh, there's a question that I just answered. Um, I'm assuming it was about the NSERC um, UCRA awards. Uh, I, I'm not actually sure, uh, sure how many people apply per year, but I think there are about 30 to 40 that are awarded to engineering students. Yeah. I'm not sure the exact number, but I think around there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when I applied, and so the, there was 30, I remember, because I wasn't, I was about to not get it the first time, and then the second time I didn't get it, and uh, I remember the number, it's ingrained in my brain. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, it was, it was, yeah, 35, 36, usually, um, but with COVID, it might change, to be honest, so. So there are NSERC awards for science, uh, I believe humanity, social sciences. Uh, I also see it for kinesiology as well. Yeah. But basically, yeah, you can actually apply. So here's an interesting thing. So we had someone ask about applying to Mac um, with a, for NSERC uh, or anything. Uh, but you can actually apply from ENG, for example, to science for an insert in science. And then you'll be competing against science people for an answer or same way around. If, if you're in science, you can actually apply for an ENG insert, but you'll be applying for against um, uh, ENG people. So uh, wherever you apply is where uh, the NSERC total awards is gonna be taken from. Uh, the award is the same, is just who you're applying to, or like the department that is looking at your application and uh, looking at like, y you know, there's like a pool for engineering students, there's a pool for like science, and there are just different awards for each, so, yeah. There's another question. Uh, I don't know if you, either of you two want to? Yeah, so in my experience, uh, yeah, uh, so the, the question is uh, for the GPA cutoff, what uh, else is the applicant assessed on? Um, so the cutoff, again, I, in, in my experience, it's uh, 
I, in, in the years I applied, it was like an 11 average that you needed, but apparently went down after that. So uh, usually it used to be um, like mostly GPA, but um, uh, scholarships that you've had in the past do help quite a bit. Um, that like a scholarship, if you have like a good, so basically the rich get richer sort of deal, um, where uh, if you have a scholarship, you can probably get this one as well, um, if you have a slightly lower average. Um, so make sure on the application you put like, you make yourself look good, um, put everything you have on there. Um, what else? Uh, but you don't have to have like a research position uh, or like a research award like NSERC, like if you're applying for NSERC for the first time, uh, it's not like you can't, you can't do that. Oh no, but like if you've gotten an entrance scholarship, for example, uh, those are, those are big. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot. If I remember uh, correctly, when I applied last year, like obviously they asked the question about if you have any other awards and like I filled that out. But if I do remember correctly and I and kind of vague in my mind, but they did ask a question, like maybe tell us a little bit about your experience and like why you want it, why you want the scholarship. You, oh, um, the prof on their side, they have to apply, uh, submit an abstract, I think. So may, that also may count if the research is like actually really interesting, uh, that might um, uh, maybe help. If, if it's like, yeah, this student is just going to be sitting around, basically, they might not give you the NSERC. So it's a mix of a lot of things. Uh, it used to be mostly just GPA, but it seems like they've uh, gotten better. Uh, making sure that the project looks interesting, as Dylan mentioned for the abstract, I think is really important. Usually a prof would probably have like an idea of that, like the format of it. So maybe you can ask uh, if they have uh, examples of like, how do you like, what are the, like, how do you start one? Like what content is kind of in the body and how do you usually conclude? You could definitely ask for like editing help. I think another thing that might help you quite a bit is to um, ask the prof if they have any relevant papers that they, or maybe just a paper they published, then you can actually just find like a bunch of papers on the references section um, that you can read. Obviously this, this does take time, so uh, it's not it's not simple, uh, but an abstract's usually like what, like 400 words or something. Uh, it might be shorter for this one, maybe 250. I'm not, yeah. I can't recall too well, but um, if, if you can basically get information from anywhere you can, uh, but don't, I would, I would say don't make anything up because uh, these reviewers for NSERC, they're usually knowledgeable enough uh, to like maybe look through those makeup stuff. So if, if you can actually put some research into it, it helps. Uh, it kind of sucks that, yeah, you got to write it yourself, but. Um, also maybe reach out to the prof, like the one that's asking you to write one and ask them maybe to re redirect you to one of their grad students because oh, yeah. they're also really helpful and most likely they are they're really focused on that research so so they might know more than if you were to dive on your own so I'm not sure about the specifics does it uh, does it always ask for a monetary value as well I believe they they ask for a monetary value scholarship. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so uh yeah, if if it's not scholarship, some other awards. I mean, if if you did get like an NSERC or something in the past like that that helps, but otherwise it's a uh, it's uh can't really think of anything else unless you want like a competition. Uh that also helps. Um, I'm not sure if that if that uh, if that falls into the same category though. So this is yeah, th definitely don't like flood it with random stuff. Like if it, I remember in second year, I didn't have a lot to put in there, so don't worry that much. 
uh, about filling it out, just uh, like it is what it is. It's better to not have stuff than lie. So like it's it's uh, it's okay. means that you were like one of the top students in in I don't know if department or a course I guess a course I don't know um, but it, it it does hold some weight so definitely I think that's a thing that you can probably put in so um, you are competing with upper years and I know there is some preference towards upper years, but I know a uh, first year last year who applied for an NSERG USRA and received it for their first summer research position. So I think it's still worthy to apply. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure about the specifics, but um, definitely worth a try to apply. Uh, the only thing is that you got to be mindful, right? Like. Um, if, if you know that you don't have a chance, for example, like don't don't waste your time, right? But uh, if you're a first year and there is a chance, definitely do it. Um, it is extra work, but, uh, um, and also remember there's other sources of funding. So, and that this goes to everyone, like uh, if, if, if uh, NSERC doesn't pan out, like it doesn't for lots of people out there, uh, there's, there's other, ways to do this. Um, even out of pocket, sometimes you don't even need funding sources uh, that the prof will, will pay fully. So uh, don't worry too much. I think um, uh, if you discuss with the professor you're considering research with, they generally know the um, just the general outcome of these. And um, you can discuss like if uh, they think it's uh, worthwhile to consider applying. So. I, I, like I, it doesn't hurt. Like um, if you don't receive the award, then that's okay. Um, since I have it open, I might as well go in details. Um, the application profile. So if you apply to it uh, previously, your academic background. So they're gonna ask you like what program you're currently studying. Like if you're in first year, or like. If you're in second year or above, it will ask you your discipline or your stream. When are you expected to graduate? Things like that. Uh, and the awards section, that's pretty much it. Awards and transcript. Uh, but if you come up with any questions later, you can contact us through social media. <laughs>